Welcome to the third video in the series about Accelerus Draw Tools. Uh, in this one we're going to have a look at the functional groups. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of revision about the main functional groups, what they are and the conventions we use for drawing them, and then we'll open up another page of Accelerus and we'll draw these examples here. Um, so, functional groups. Uh, the bit of the molecule that does the chemistry in, in essence, this is sort of like the simplest iteration. It has a functional group at the end, OH, uh, which is attached to a carbon chain. Um, now the carbon chain obviously can undergo chemistry, but generally speaking the bit that does the reacting uh, most is the functional group. Now the carbon chain will influence things such as the physical properties, so if you have a short carbon chain, a compound might be a, a liquid or even a gas. Uh, as the length of the carbon chain increases, uh, that increases the likelihood of it being a liquid or even a solid. Okay, so the first set of functional groups are multiple carbon bonds. So carbon, carbon, double and triple bonds. These typically undergo reactions such as addition reactions where, for example, this double bond will open up leaving a single bond behind. And there'll be a couple of atoms or groups attached across the double bond. Um, I've li linked together a, a group of a bunch of functional groups here containing oxygen. There's obviously other ones that contain oxygen, but this is generally the way it's done. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is this R thing over here. I'm sure you're familiar enough with the periodic table to know that there isn't an element with a symbol R. R is what chemists use when they're not really bothered about depicting the rest of the molecule. Uh, so I guess is the ultimate expression of the importance of a functional group. This could be anything. Uh, it could be just a little carbon chain, or it could be quite a big entity. Um, we've got more than one, we refer to them R1 and R2. Uh, and here are some examples of the uh, functional groups containing uh, carbon. So alcohols, ethers and esters, uh, all important in biology. Uh, ketones, aldehydes and carboxylic acids, also all important in biology. Um, going down the page a little bit, we find functional groups containing S. Uh, so there's disulfide there. Disulfide bonds often found stabilised in structures such as the um, such as the tertiary structure of proteins. Uh, thiol, the uh, SH bond, which is generally speaking described as being analogous to the OH bond, is important in a number of situations. Uh, thiol bonds, for example, are found in compounds such as acetyl coenzyme A. Um, group of functional groups containing nitrogen. Amide is very important. Amine is rather very important. Um, the uh, amino acids contain both amine and carboxylic acid groups. And when an amine and carboxylic acid group get together from uh, different amino acids, you get a peptide bond. And then we'll ultimately you get proteins. Uh, amides, still quite important in biology. Nitro groups, a bit rarer. I, I don't, I don't often, can't often think of any that you'll find in biology. Um, and then there's functional groups containing halogens, and that's what the X refers to. Again, there isn't a element of the symbol X. There's a few with X. Xe such as xenon, uh, but not X. In this case, it's referring to either fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. Okay, so that's the introduction. We'll now go to the next page and start to draw these molecules. All right, the first thing we have is a primary alcohol. Uh, that's an, al an alcohol group at the end of a uh, aliphatic chain. We create the chain by clicking on the chain tool, as you might expect. Hold on the mouse and drag across. You'll see a number appear. Now, this is the number of carbon atoms in the chain, so we'll drag it across to seven. Uh, but we're going to replace the last one with an oxygen. So we go up here as usual, uh, put an oxygen in there, put the hydrogen in next to it, in auto. And there we have now created, um, if you do a little bit of nomenclature, hexan one -ol. Right, next thing we had was a couple of uh, groups containing carbon carbon multiple bonds. So we just use the bond tool in the normal way. Uh, we're going to change them to carbons, so they disappear because carbons aren't shown explicitly normally. Go to the bond tool again, just click on the end, and it'll put the bonds in, in the correct orientation. Right, so I want to convert that single bond to a double bond to make sure each of those two carbons is uh, uh, so have four bonds attached to it. And there we go, very straightforward. Now we can do the whole thing again, or what we can do is just do Control C and Control V, drag that over here, go to the bond tool again, and click in here to put the triple bond in. So very easy, very straightforward. I'll move them out of the way. And the next thing we were doing was functional groups containing oxygen. Uh, so the first thing we had was um, an alcohol, so it's an OH. Uh, change that again to show the hydrogen display. 
Then it had an R over here indicating we're not particularly interested in what the rest of the molecule is. Um, so to get that, there's a couple of places you can get it. It's, 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 it's in here, or if or another place you can look is in the periodic table. Uh, you can have it not sure extended table or sure extended table, and there's R there, and there's X, and a couple of H pluses as well, which are sort of useful things. But we can get it from over here, so we just click on there. So that's a very generic alcohol. It's an OH group attached to something else, another group. Uh, we're not entirely sure what, and we're not particularly worried. Okay, uh, next thing would be uh, an ether we had. Um, so it's got R in there, because that's the last thing we had, and that's actually quite useful. It saves us uh, drawing them all again. Um, actually, I'm going to, because I'm going to go to the car, the this tool over here again, and draw a short one. So we draw a little short carbon chain with three carbons in it. Uh, grab R, I'll put R in there, um, at the moment we haven't differentiated between the R's, which is something we'll need to do, and put the oxygen in here. And I've said this was uh, an ether, assuming these were both alkyl, alkyl chains, it would be an ether the whole thing, otherwise it would probably just be an ether group. Right, so we want to change these to R1 and R2, so we right click on that, and go to create template abbreviation. Now this is dragged a bit off the screen, so I'll pull that over and just type in R1 and click on apply. You see it's now changed to R1. We can do the same for this one over here which we want to change to R2. Uh, R2 not R2, D2. And change that to R2 and apply. Okay so that was quite nice. So the next thing we're going to do is create an ester uh, group. So, so again we've got the zigzaggy tool and we drag across to create a chain three carbon atoms long which we expand uh, by another bond. And it's got R in the end which is good, that's what we want. We want another R at the other end and we want a couple of oxygens. Uh, again we want to change the names of these R's uh, so we go to create template abbreviation and call them respectively R1 and R2. <laughs> Right now, this is a bit different than what we drew earlier on in the earlier in the previous example. We read O oh, then R two without the bond being shown. Now, if this works, and it's sometimes a little bit fiddly, uh, we can we can produce what's called an abbreviation. I select the whole thing, then I select the oxygen. Um, create template abbreviation, and we're going to call this O R two. It doesn't work particularly well with R groups. We've got some better examples a bit later on. Uh, that's what we had before. Again, if you select it, and we go to expand abbreviation, it brings it back. So that's quite nice. Uh, abbreviations are often quite a nice way of drawing molecules in a compact format, though the unabbreviated forms are normally how they uh, appear spatially. So we'll drag that out of the way. So the next thing we're going to look at is um, a ketone and aldehyde and carboxylic acid, uh, which all of which are examples of carbon atom being uh, double bond into an oxygen. So we'll have our usual zigzag tool to start with to create a simple three carbon thing. It's been a bit sort of misbehaving there as it sometimes does. Uh, that's the orientation we want it. Uh, I'm not going to bother re naming the R group specifically. Let's call them R and R. Um, as we'll see when we do the aldehyde, there's quite a big difference. Uh, for it to be a ketone, you do need two R groups. Um, in an aldehyde, you'll have an R group and a H group over here. Right, so we use the bond tool just to stick in a bond here and make it a double bond. It's R at the moment, so we'll change that to oxygen. Right, that's a key to one. Um, okay, we'll copy that. Just for simplicity's sake. Um, pull that over here. Hopefully that thing will disappear. Now the only difference is that instead of two R groups, one of these is a hydrogen. So we just click on there and turn it into a hydrogen. Okay, so far so good. Yeah, pretty straightforward to do. Right, the next thing we're going to do is a carboxylic acid where I'm going to introduce a new tool which we haven't looked at yet, uh, which is uh, real, well, it's really an extension of the templates. Uh, we've got the templates for rings here, but there are other ones. If you look under this menu, you'll find a list of exciting stuff. Uh, among them, functional groups. So if we click on that in a moment, this whole new set of uh, things we can play with appears. Right, so we're going to do a carboxylic acid. So we're going to have an R. Uh, going to a carboxylic acid group. At the moment we've only finished with hydrogen, so that's what we've still got. Uh, so I'll turn the first one into a 
are. Now we could draw the carboxylic acid group out by hand, but I say using the uh, functional group tools, there is one of them there already. So we select C or two H, we click on here, and it appears as if by magic. Uh, so that's doing a little bit of work. It isn't magic, of course. It is science. Now, if we if we select that now, we can expand the abbreviation. Notice it's not joining the hydrogen explicitly because it doesn't normally. Now we can make it do that. Um, or conversely, we can select it again. Um, select the whole thing again, and then contract abbreviation. We can actually change the abbreviation as well. You'll often see it drawn as C double O H. Um, CO2H is actually probably a more accurate way of drawing it, but we can change it to C0OH, and we will do that. And it changes that. And just to prove it's still there, if we expand the abbreviation, it brings back our old friend again. Um, so, carboxylic acid group. Let's move that out of the way. Moment until that keeps getting in the way. Um, right, so we're now moving on to functional groups containing sulfur. And the first one we talked about was disulfide. Disulfide bonds are important in stabilizing the structure of things like proteins. So we're just going to have a little zigzaggy thing with a couple of R groups. Uh, this is very easy to draw. You should, be able to, should have probably figured out how to do this already. So what we're going to do is replace these carbon atoms with sulfurs. So there's two sulfurs next to each other, hence disulfide. Boom, boom, boom. So a disulfide group, straightforward. Uh, next one we had was a thiol group, which is uh, pretty much as straightforward. We select the bond tool, create a bond. Um, it's already got a, an S in there, so we can leave one of them there. We can have an R at the other end. Um, there may be a thiol group in the functional groups. No, there doesn't appear to be. Uh, so we want to put in another bond here, which we're going to attach a hydrogen to. Okay, we want we normally see the thiol group drawn as get rid of that drawn as you know SH without the bond. So we'll select that, right click, create template abbreviation, and we will call it SH. Apply it, and there we go. And as usual, when we select the abbreviation, we can expand it. Um, so that's the one containing sulfur done. Move that out of the way. Uh, move that up there. So we're now moving on to functional groups containing N. And the most simple one to draw is the amine. So we draw a carbon carbon bond. Uh, it doesn't look like carbon at the moment because it isn't. Put an R group in there. Uh, we'll put an N group in there. And then all we do, like we did with the alcohol, is make the hydrogens explicit. So I'll turn it on. And there's the amine, there's the amine group. Right, move that out of the way. Right, the next thing was uh, an amide group, which is like that, but a little bit more complicated. So we draw in a bond, and then because it's uh, got a couple of other things attached to it, we'll draw in, we'll draw in the bits first. So we'll put in an R group there, and I'm going to make this carbon and make it explicit so we can see what's going on. So I'll put in a carbon there, right click, show explicit carbon label. Right, now, uh, an amide group is a CONH2 group, so we're going to think a little bit about how this is put together. Uh, select the bond tool to put in a couple of bonds. Um, now, as you might expect, it's, CO, it's, it's C double bond O, so we'll put that in there. Um, and then there's an end down here with a couple of hydrogens attached to it, so we click on the N, as we saw a bit earlier on. Um, so it's basically like an amine group, which is, is attached to a carbon L carbon. Make those hydrogens explicit, and that's the amide group. Right, finally, in this little class, it's quite annoying that that formatting toolbar keeps getting in the way. Let's move that up there. And uh, this little class is a nitro group. Uh, not many of these in life uh, tend to be associated with things that go bang, like trinitro or toluene. Put the R in. And again, we're going to go to the uh, functional group thing. And we'll, if we have a look through here, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of find it doesn't appear to be in here, in here. So what we need to do is go to our menu again and click find nitrogen. Now, so we'll add another menu of things, uh, some of them very exotic, and these sort of protecting groups. Uh, we don't want anything that exotic. We want NO2. So we'll have a little wander around. There's NO, there's NO2. Click on there, and he puts it in. Um, 
it, this is a uh, a charge group. Um, yeah. Um, if we if we select it and we add template abbreviation, uh, we can call that NO2. Now click on apply, and again do the usual thing whereby we can expand the abbreviation. Uh, as mentioned, it's got a charge in, on, on it. If you uh, have a little sort of think about the way the electrons are arranged, I, I think you'll probably figure out qu quite quickly why one of them has a charge on it. Um, right, okay, there we go. That's uh, almost complete. The last thing we had was functional groups containing halogens. Uh, the generic case is sort of slightly interesting, I guess, and it would be something called Rx. So we'll put in our usual bond thing. We've got an R there. Uh, again, go to the periodic table and grab the X and just put the X in there. Okay, a pretty, um, you know, un, 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 undescribed compound that is. Uh, we can change the X to a bromine or a chlorine or an iodine. Um, okay, so there we are. That was the uh, introduction to functional groups and how to draw them in Excel or Restore. I hope that was useful to you. Bye for now.